which say that African process of unification has been interrupted and stopped. But this process must continue. And the stopping point must be fair to you. 300 million were taken out of Africa. Thus, this continuation of Africa is crucial to the world of these 300 million. It is this 300 million. It was only after slavery that Africa could be divided by colonial powers. They didn't divide Africa until 1884, 1885 in Berlin. Thus, the slave trade and colonialism are one and the same and must be properly understood. Unless you understand this, you will not understand this revolutionary process that Africa must now undergo to arrive at her continental unification, which she will arrive at. Now, we said that it was stopped by capitalism, therefore, just to get there, we must fight against capitalism. And we must fight against capitalism in every aspect. And of course, the most crucial aspect is the cultural aspect. Because each people have their culture, and their ideology for their struggle comes from their culture. This understanding has a lot to do, first of all, with the struggle for Africa and her continental unity. We said that she must be anti-capitalist. If she's anti-capitalist, it means she can only be socialist. Because there are only two economic systems in the world, capitalism or socialism. That's all. There are no others. And there can only be two because every economic system must answer one fundamental question. Who will own and control the wealth of the country? Who will own and control the means of production? The question can only be answered two ways. Either a few will own or everybody will own. It's as simple as that. In America, where a few people own, they try to justify the right of a few people to own everything. But no matter how they have to justify it, the fact is there. When a few people own everything, these pigs who own oil will send you to steal your blood so they can get more oil and become richer. Capitalism is a backward system. And as it must be clear here that if Africa is anti-capitalist, she must be socialist. Now, we must do some discussion with socialism because many of our people are confused on it. In the first instance, we know many are confused because they know absolutely nothing about it. Just because they live in America, you know America, the people in America are the most politically ignorant people on the face of the earth. I mean, you look I mean, I live outside of America. You know, when a revolutionary regime seizes power, they burn all reactionary books. They ban all reactionary magazines. When a reactionary group seizes power, they burn all revolutionary books. They ban all revolutionary magazines. But in America, they ain't got to burn or ban nothing. They leave the library. You don't need it. <laughs> you can't get away about you. <laughs> Not like you, you read history books. <laughs> If you don't get on television, you ain't gonna look for it. <laughs> so, so, we know the people in America are just ignorant, get ignorant, made arrogant in ignorance, and since the system is racist, when it comes to us, it's double dose of ignorance. I mean, so just when we say we have to struggle against the system, we mean in every aspect. And the aspect that we must struggle against is in the aspect of its ideas. The socialism must come to be properly understood. We know nothing about it, yet we take positions against it. One man told me, well, you know, the reason I'm against socialism is because it comes out of Europe. Who told you that? And who told you it came out of Europe? Just like some people think that Christianity came out of Europe because Jesus Christ is painted white. The Palestinian. <laughs> So everyone is getting confused everywhere. No, 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 no. Socialism can't come out of Europe. Socialism is a universal truth. The laws of gravity are called Newton's laws in America. But you can't think that Newton invented that the body falls at the rate of 32 feet per second squared per second squared. Newton cannot invent that. The best we can say about Newton is that he is an astute observer. That's all. If I'm in Timbuktu, doing any experiment with the laws of gravity, I come to the exact same conclusion that Newton came to, that a body in motion tends to stay in motion unless stopped by an outside force. Newton cannot invent this. Karl Marx cannot invent socialism. It's a universal truth. The best we can give him is an astute observer. 
But any man, any woman, if I'm sitting in the desert of Libya in North Africa, looking at the relationship between capital and labor, I will come to the exact same conclusion of Karl Marx, that wherever capital tries to dominate labor, there will be a ruthless struggle against capital by labor until labor comes to smash capital and dominate it. My people's history showed me that in America. We smashed chattel slavery, which was nothing but capital covering labor. And this slave labor rose up and smashed it. So the laws of socialism are for everybody. Karl Marx's great contribution to humanity was not in the area of socialism. His real contribution was in the area of dialectical and historical materialism. But since they don't want you to learn about that, they don't even mention it. <laughs> yes. But uh, you must go and look at dialectical materialism and historical materialism. We say Karl Marx could not invent this. As a matter of fact, if you will do some reading, you will see there was a brother by the name of Ibn Khaldun who lived in Tunisia in the 11th century. And if you will go and read any of his books, I mean, you just take Paris, it's translated, it's in your library. <laughs> if you will go and just, you know, you know, we have people, we can dance, you know, I got nothing against dancing, but we should just dance over the library. You know, what's the <laughs> we need to read as a people, seriously. We need to read, seriously. Ivan Khaldun has the same terms that Marx has, surplus labor, origins of the state, origins of private property. And he wrote in the 11th century AD, and he was an African writing out of Tunisia. Consequently, once you know your history, don't get confused. Socialism is not, is not, it's a universal concept. As a matter of fact, the very values of socialism come from communalism. And communalism rested in Africa very, 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 very long. As a matter of fact, if one will look properly at these values of communalism and socialism, one will see that Africa has the chance at being quickly arrived at a unified socialist continent. Because communalism rested a long time, capitalism never had a foothold in our continent. And feudalism never reached to the terroristic aspects it's reached other areas. Thus, these communalistic aspects of our values are so prevalent, and we will show it to you as we discuss more and more. Thus, we must understand what Pan-Africanism is. Pan-Africanism is, is an objective. The objective is a unified socialist continent. This objective was an evolutionary objective, us moving to unify our continent. It was stopped by capitalism. In order for it to continue, it can only continue as a revolutionary anti-capitalist movement imposing the economic system of socialism upon the African continent. Thus, you have a clear understanding of this scientifically, not based on anybody's thinking.